Thierry Henry often made football look easy. He scored goals with great flair and originality and at times appeared almost unstoppable. But his climb to football summit wasn't without its difficulties. This is the story of the rise of Thierry Henry. Henri was born and raised in Les Ulysses, in housing projects south of Paris. It was a tough, working-class and multicultural environment and, as it turned out, a hothouse for footballing talent. Henri is Les Ulysses' most famous son, but Patrice Evra and Anthony Martial were both also raised within its brutalist concrete buildings. Henri was also an early graduate at Clairefontaine, the French Football Federation's boarding school-like national football centre and by 17, he'd joined AS Monaco, who were then under the management of Arsene Wenger. Henri's progress at Monaco was startling. Within two years, he'd progressed from the club's youth team to playing for their senior side in Liga. Henri would never be prolific for Monaco. He'd grown up idolising Marco van Basten, even wearing his famous number 12 shirt for France. But he wouldn't become a full-time forward until later in his career. Nevertheless, in the 28 goals he did score for Monaco between 1994 and 1999, it's possible to see the traits that he would eventually make famous. The gliding acceleration, the languid technique, the open body side-footed finish that would become his trademark. His identity as a goalscorer was in early evidence, even then. But it was still a strange period. At a glance, Henri's progress at Monaco seems serene, as it did with the national team. He was France's top scorer at the 1998 World Cup and the French media had been gilding his reputation for years previously, enraptured as they were by his skill and speed. But he was not always a starter for Monaco during that period, and a bizarre episode in 1996 might have derailed him entirely. He would sign a pre-contract agreement with Real Madrid, which would ultimately be annulled. Fever's eventual judgment would find the Spanish club guilty of an illegal approach to a contracted player and of utilising the services of an unlicensed agent. The episode even ensnared Henri's own father, and while the player might have suffered a ban as a result, FIFA only fined him £40,000. Similarly, while Henri's part in the 1998 World Cup win might have guaranteed him a place in his national side for the foreseeable future, he would actually suffer the ignominy of a demotion back to the under-21 side in the months after the tournament and wouldn't make a single senior appearance in 1999. And Juventus was also a curious interlude. The deal that took him from France to Italy in January of 1999 was unusual and done without the knowledge of his then representatives. Upon arriving, Henri encountered a formation for which he didn't really have the attributes to. He was most regularly used not as a winger, but as a wide midfielder on the left of a 3-5-2. It was a role with a defensive element to which he wasn't suited and a disappointing first half season turned sour when Luciano Moji, then Juventus's managing director, attempted to loan Henri to Udinese. Henri refused the move, creating the conditions for his transfer to Arsenal. And that was a transfer that he'd wanted for some time. Arsene Wenger had been at Highbury since 1997 and of course had given Henri his debut at Monaco shortly before being sacked. In Philippe Auclair's essential biography, he describes Henri's eagerness to join Arsenal years before he actually did. He records Henri badgering Gilles Grimondi a former Monaco teammate who moved to North London in 97 to tell Arsene Wenger that he was keen on a transfer. And actually phoned Wenger shortly before his Juventus deal was completed in 99, hoping to move to England instead. Just six months later, he finally became an Arsenal player. Wenger was really the first coach to properly state his intention to turn Henri into a centre-forward and would praise his finishing ability during his unveiling. Famously, not even Henri had that much faith in himself insisting throughout his career that he'd never been a natural goalscorer. Arsenal would become the apex of Henri's career. But again, what looked like an easy transition on paper, with Henri scoring 17 Premier League goals in his first season, was initially uncomfortable. Henri was replacing a young Nicola Anelka, whose departure to Real Madrid was formalised 24 hours after his arrival. He was also playing in the shadow of Ian Wright, the club's record goalscorer and former talisman. Henri laboured. He was profligate and occasionally looked out of his depth. 
He actually went eight games without scoring at the beginning of his Arsenal career, and while he wasn't mocked in the same way that Dennis Bergkamp had been on arriving in England, he was still an £11.5 million player who wasn't scoring and who seemed to be wilting amid the frenzy of the English game. Like Bergkamp before him though, he would also announce himself with a brilliant goal against Southampton in the middle of September 1999. Receiving a pass from Tony Adams with his back to goal, 25 yards out, Henri pinned his defender, turned away and in field, and whipped a finish into the top corner on the turn. Henri had arrived, and following that day at the Dell, it was remarkable not only how regularly he began to score, but how quickly he became the player he's remembered for being today. In that first season, he scored fabulous goals against Middlesbrough at the Riverside Stadium, a trademark stylish double against Sunderland at Highbury, and a sensational slaloming run and finish against Watford at Vicarage Road. In fact, it's a measure of just how quickly Henri adjusted that one of his most famous goals for Arsenal, the impudent flick over the shoulder volley against Manchester United, was actually just his 31st for the club and was scored barely 14 months after arriving in England. It was arguably the quintessential Henri moment, and yet he'd only just turned 23. And it was just the first of a whole gallery of astonishing goals and an array of wonderful achievements. The Premier League and the FA Cup double of 2002, a further FA Cup in 2003, and the invincible season that ended with an unbeaten Premier League title in 2004. Between 2001 and 2006, he would score 30 goals or more across all competitions for five straight years. In October 2005, in a Champions League tie against Sparta Prague, he would surpass Ian Wright to become the club's all-time top scorer. And even in his final injury-disrupted season, when Arsenal had fallen from their Invincibles peak and Henri was in athletic decline, he still managed to light up the league with goals at Ewood Park against Blackburn, Liverpool at Anfield, and in a fitting touch with a last-minute header to beat Manchester United during their first visit to the new Emirates Stadium. He would move to Barcelona in 2007. And given that he'd be part of the Pep Guardiola team that won a La Liga Copa del Rey Champions League treble in 2009, it seems strange to present that part of his career as almost an afterthought. It wasn't, because Henri was still a very fine player, but he was somewhat lost in the glare of Lionel Messi, Andres Iniesta and Xavi, and really more of a component rather than the main attraction. He'd retire in 2014, after five years in MLS with the New York Red Bulls and a short stop back at the Emirates on loan in 2012. In a career that had spanned three decades, he'd won a World Cup, a European Championship and a Champions League, as well as domestic league titles and cups in France, England and Spain. George Best called him a showman and an entertainer. Michel Platini said that there'd never been another French player like him and Ronaldinho admitted that he adored watching him, calling Henri a beautiful player. It was worthy testimony about an extraordinary footballer. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.